Uh, hello everybody, it's Hajj here. Um, in today's video, I will talk about my favorite and I say it again, my personal favorite lenses for zoo photography. Um, I'm not saying those are the best lenses for uh, zoo photography for everybody. Um, I will only talk about uh, lenses that I have I used and I love. Um, along the video, of course, I will also show uh, sample photos. I was a biologist. Um, I love nature. And unfortunately, here in Germany, uh, the forests are lacking much wildlife in comparison to the forest in my home country, uh, Madagascar. It is actually uh, in a zoo where I can still see um, several animal species. Uh, however, uh, I would only visit zoos where uh, animals are being kept in good conditions, um, which is not only better for the photos, uh, but also for the welfare of the animals. But photographing uh, in zoos actually exhibit different challenges than photographing uh, animals in the wild. Uh, in a zoo, uh, a multitude of animal species from uh, all over the world uh, are actually found in one place. It's kind of a very cheap um, around the world photography trip actually. Uh, the animals are also easy to spot, uh, predictable, uh, tamed and often at closer distance. However, uh, zoos are always busy. Um, there is always something or someone in the frame. Um, artificial infrastructures in the background, uh, mesh wire or glass between the camera and the subject. Uh, also, uh, indoor enclosures are most of the time dim. Uh, light is often not abundant enough. Fortunately though, um, those inconveniences uh, could be overcome or at least then eased by one solution, which is a lens aperture. Uh, wide aperture lenses uh, gather uh, more light uh, and also help uh, to diffuse uh, those distractions in the front uh, or uh, in the background. Uh, my all-time uh, favorite lens for uh, zoo photography is the uh, 300mm uh, 2.8 lens. Um, 300 millimeters is often uh, too short for uh, standard wildlife photography, but for zoos, um, I find the focal length to be just right. Uh, my second favorite lens is the 70 to 200 uh, 2.8 uh, lens. Um, often I have it uh, on a second camera body. Um, this lens allows actually me to go a little bit wider for a uh, big animal or if I want to actually uh, incorporate uh, more of the environment in the shot. But even though uh, those are my uh, two favorite lenses, uh, once I took my 4.6 kilo uh, 400 millimeters 2.8 GVR lens along with my 300 millimeters and my 70 to 200 millimeters and uh, two camera bodies to the zoo and it was not a pleasant experience. Uh, I was using a, a monopod but still uh, the weight was killing me uh, as I moved from place to place. It's not like in the wild where I would just sit or lie down for hours waiting for animal to show up. Uh, but of course, uh, there were uh, situations where the 400 millimeters was the right focal length. But in most situations, uh, it is just overkill, I think. Um, no wonder why people were uh, making fun of me behind my back that I was compensating for something. And uh, by the way, um, uh, be careful if you use camera support um, in crowded places. Um, I would never bring a tripod um, in the zoo because it might not even be allowed in the first place. 
or it might also bar uh, the other visitors. Um, I was using a monopod sometimes, but in zoo, uh, the main visitors are often children, and you need to take that into account. Uh, these children just run around and might not even notice the monopod leg. Um, you do not want someone uh, to run over your expensive gears, uh, or even worse, if one of the crazy little buggers actually uh, tripped over your uh, tripod leg and then uh, falls down in the animal enclosure. Uh, you do not want that to happen. But back to our main subject, um, how about the costs? Um, yes, those wide aperture lenses used not to be cheap. But thanks to the massive move to mirrorless system, um, the price of second-hand lenses, uh, especially Nikon lenses, are at their lower price ever. Um, for the price of the highly hyped 180-600mm to lens, um, one can get the 300mm 2.8 VR version 1, um, plus the 70-200mm to 2.8 version 2. Um, this 70 to 200 millimeters uh, version 2 lens really lost its value because of uh, influencers demonizing its focus breathing properties. But believe me, it is not something to worry about in real world photography. Uh, if you do not mind also losing VR, uh, you can even get uh, the latest version of the 300mm 2.8 non-VR, which is now under a grand, and then get again the Focus Briva 70-200mm 2.8, um, a 1.4 uh, teleconverter, a uh, 2 times teleconverter, um, again get the old one but uh, allowing still autofocus, and then you have 70 to 600 millimeters covered. If you uh, have a really tight budget though, then you can also get the old 80 to 200 millimeters 2.8 lens and then add uh, a teleconverter if uh, the budget still permit. Um, I have mainly uh, second hand gears and they are working fantastically. Uh, do not be too obsessed about lens sharpness. Uh, these lenses are more than sharp enough for their purposes. And in contrast to kit lenses, uh, those professional grade lenses are built to last. So this is my take on zoo photography. Uh, I hope you liked the video and find it also um, helpful. Um, Please let me know in the comment below um, your uh, favorite um, zoo photography lenses or uh, gears. And that's for this video and until next time then, bye.